everybody, this is Sam McGuire and I'm back for another tutorial on Soundtrack Pro for Creative Cow. Today we're going to talk about doing some ADR or some looping. So what we're going to be doing is taking this video, which I've already preloaded, we're going to replace one line of dialogue. What we're going to do is show you some ways you can use Soundtrack Pro to not only record the replaced dialogue, but then to also edit it. Now this system has some limitations. It's not one of the best systems in terms of doing ADR, but it has a lot of features which are going to make it nice. And in some ways, it may be more than you'll need for the type of things you'll be doing. Now if you need to loop an entire feature film, you won't be doing it in Soundtrack Pro, and you probably won't be doing it yourself, but this will be an option for replacing certain pieces of small dialogue, and it could be useful in a number of different situations. Couple things starting off, you'd want to record in a decently acoustically treated room, and also you should use a specific microphone. Now, if you're replacing dialogue just one line from a production, try to find the same microphone that was used on location or on set and place it in a similar location as it was for the rest of the recorded dialogue so you can match it. The easiest way to match dialogue is to recreate what was done previously. And even if that means taking a laptop, going to the same location and doing it there, that would actually work really well for this type of thing. If you need to go in a studio, it may take some more work to match it, but we're not going to talk about that as much. We're just going to talk about the process of doing this. And in this example, we're just going to be using equipment I'm using right now to talk to you, so it may not match this at all, but the timing will hopefully match, and I'll be able to demonstrate the editing tools. First of all, what we need to do is when we have the video in here, I've already gone through and found the line I want. I put a marker right there. And to put a marker, all I do is push M right at that spot. It's going to be nice to have that for when we actually place some of the information we're going to be using. So I tend to put markers for all of those things. You can actually come in on each of these markers. If you're doing a number of different lines, go to details. And we can name this and we can actually type in the line if we want to. And the line in this case, let's play it for you. Um, I definitely feel more confident. So, um, I definitely feel more confident. And one of the nice things about putting it right in here is that it gives you a reference of what's being said. Um, I definitely feel more confident. Okay, so we have that reference and it not only shows up here but it also will show up right on the top with the marker. So if you're having someone look at the screen while you're doing this, they can see the line right there. Um, I definitely feel more confident. So we've got this on there. It's really hard when doing dialogue replacement just to play along like this. So we could push play, have them do the line. Confident. Um, I definitely feel more confident. And it's going to be really tricky to know exactly when to start. And that's the key is being prepared so you can start right at the same time as the video. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to create some beeps to do that. So we're going to do a new audio file, mono 48. And then once we're in here, we can actually go process, insert, waveform, sine wave. Let's go to a thousand hertz. One second. We're going to pull this down. We don't want it to be full volume. But minus 12 is fine. Let's zoom in on this. I'm going to actually take the majority of this one second and we'll just pull it all the way down so it's silent. Take the whole thing. Command C. Let's just move our playhead to the end. Make sure it's not selected when we do this. Paste and paste. So now I've got three in a row. So now that I have this, we're just going to save it. We'll call it beeps. Save. Okay, so let's come over here and actually pull that file up right here. 
pull that in, you'll see that we now have the beeps. Let's find this place. Right there. So check this out. We're going to play in advance. We can actually, for this example, I actually want to pull this edge back because we don't need to be distracted by the edge there. So let's actually trim this back down like that. Get it out of the way. Let's listen. Um, I definitely feel more confident. Um, let's trim the ambience right to the edge there. So now where the fourth beep would be is when we'll do that line. So when you record, we'll go into a different track here. This track is the one we're going to record into. And for this, we'll set our input, mono. We can actually listen to what we're doing here. Okay. Let's record arm the track we're going to use for this. And let's actually label it. A, D, R. And then the next step is going to be to set a loop point. Give us a little bit of room before the beeps. These beeps are a little slow for my taste on this particular thing, but I think it's going to be okay for this example. This will now loop record as long as you can see that the blue is activated. If we turn looping off, it'll get dimmed. We want that to make sure it's looped. We'll now record. I'm going to let it loop once as I do this just to check the end. Let's make sure we're record armed. This allows this track to be recorded into. We can push record down here in the transport now. Um, definitely, definitely feel more confident. Um, definitely feel more confident. Um, definitely feel more confident. Um, definitely. definitely feel more confident. Okay, so now we have the audio right here. This is where Soundtrack really excels because we can take this and now work with it and edit it and make it fit the actual picture. So let's open up the lower pane and in here we're going to go to the multi take editor. Okay, so we have this now open. We've got these different takes. You can see right here that this is the comp track. And then I've got the four takes I did below that. Let's listen to each one, see how it syncs up. Um, definitely feel more confident. Okay, there's a little bit of that that's pretty loose and a couple parts which are better. Let's listen to the second one. Um, definitely feel more confident. First word comes in way too early. Um, definitely feel more confident. Last one, um, definitely feel more confident. And actually there's a little question here about whether or not we actually need the um, it's barely even noticeable and it's kind of distraction. So in the final, we might actually pull that out, which we're gonna be able to do fairly easy. So let's listen to the first one again. Um, definitely feel more confident. Okay, so it's a little bit loose there. One of the things we could do right off the bat is to blade this, right? There, you see it'll cut it on all the different levels. So this won't exactly work all the way through, but we can use a keyboard command to, to make the change with this. Option command, see how I can shift this underneath so that all of them are a little bit closer and line up a little bit more vertically. You wouldn't necessarily wanna do that all the time because what's gonna happen is that you're gonna change the sync on these. So that could be a very bad thing to do. But in this case, I'm just experimenting with getting rid of the um, so I'm pulling the silence into the very first part and listening to the second part. Definitely feel more confident. Okay, so we'll see how the other ones line up here. Definitely feel more confident. A little different performance on that one. Definitely feel more confident. Definitely feel more confident. Okay, so there's different things about each of these that I like and don't like. One of the other things we can do is actually come out here once we have the best take we like. 
between these. We can now close the multi-take editor and go to the file editor. The file editor is going to show us now a different view of this. Definitely feel more confident. Maybe we are missing the um a little bit. Let's now go into here though. And let's close this left pane so we have a little more room to work on this. And what we have is the ability to use this tool right here. It's called the audio stretching tool. Let's us listen to it. Definitely feel more confident. Definitely feel more confident. And it may be that this last bit, I want to stretch it out a little bit. So I'll make a selection, go to the right edge, and then drag it a little bit. And this expands it out. So it actually expands the audio a little bit. Definitely feel more confident. And allows us then to change the internal part of that phrase to more closely match the sync of the video. Definitely feel more confident. Let's listen again. Definitely feel more confident. I think the overall thing here is a little bit to one side. So I actually want to come in here. Option command. I want to move that just a little bit earlier. Definitely feel more confident. Okay, so imagine what you could do with someone who's actually a professional voiceover or ADR expert, someone who's really good at it because what you're getting right now is someone who's not. And so you're starting from a place that's not as close as it could be. And it looks like some of the earlier words just are not quite lining up perfectly. Definitely feel more confident. Let's deselect this. Go back to this again. Now this tool right here is a little tricky because you can't go to the left side and change that. So you have to move things around and then pull the right side only. So we could speed that up just a little bit. Definitely feel more confident. Definitely feel more confident. I think the inflection's still off a bit, but if we were replacing with his voice and using the same microphone and maybe even the same room, I think we can come up with a decent match if we're just trying to fix something, if there's a noise there that we needed to replace, etc. We could actually get there in a decent way. So after this, of course, you'd come to the effects. Let's actually fake a little bit of this. Let's add a reverb. Space designer. And with this, we've got some decent presets. Confident. Definitely feel more 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 confident. So we're adding a little bit of a small room around this. And we probably also do some EQ to match that. So we could use that as well. We want to put the EQ first. So I'm just dragging that up. I'm sure pulling some of the highs and lows down because that's really what's going to be missing in a room like this with that particular microphone that was used. Definitely feel more confident. 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 Okay, so what you're hearing now, we're still hearing a lot of the room that I'm speaking in, which does not sound like this room. It also has a lot of closeness since I'm right up on the microphone. And if I were trying to mimic this, I would definitely pull it back like this room was. So it's going to be a lot more tricky to match this. And in some ways, the whole point of this is that if you need to replace dialogue, it should be your last ditch effort. It really should not be something you plan on doing unless you know everything's all lined up or you're on a very high budget, big budget production that you can throw a lot of money at doing this. If you need to do it yourself, there are cases when you might need to do that, but you need to be prepared and be prepared to maybe compromise a little bit. Okay, so that's do-it-yourself ADR using Soundtrack Pro.